So our last drug that we wanted to talk about today is called Emplicity, and it is developed by Bristol Myers and Abvi, and that was just approved a few days ago, November thirtieth. Yeah, you know, Emplicity is important because, again, if you look at indication, is there a need? There is. Uh, Emplicity treats multiple myeloma, and it's been approved for use alongside two very commonly used therapies for multiple myeloma dexamethasone and uh, Revlimid. And because it's being proved as an adjunct therapy, and it's being approved as an adjunct therapy to these widely used drugs, there's a very good chance in my view that it becomes part of the standard of care in the second uh, and definitely in the third line treatment um, for patients. And since we're talking about 25 8,000 or so, I think, patients or 20, 26,000 patients that get diagnosed with, with multiple myeloma every year, um, a lot of whom will respond, who won't respond, will have to get retreated. Um, I think that this, again, is going to be a very important drug because it put up very solid efficacy during trials. Yeah, this is a really devastating disease. About 11,000 people die from it every year. And so to get drugs that work better and better is a fantastic thing. Um, And and it's a huge market, too. I mean, the multiple myeloma market is expected to rise in value from $8.9 billion in 2014 to just over $22 billion by 2023. Um, Revlimid is a huge part of that. That's a cell gene drug. Uh, Sales should top about $5.6 billion this year. and you do, you're going to see Revlimid continue to be used, especially because Emplicity is being used alongside it. Um, just to dig into a couple of the numbers from the trials, 78.5% of patients taking the Emplicity combination therapy, meaning alongside DEXA and Revlimid, saw complete or partial tumor shrinkage, which was better than the 65.5% reported in just the DEXA and Revlimid arm. So clearly, this is a statistically significant uh, improvement. Yeah, and you've got almost a five-month advantage in progression-free survival as well by taking the, the adding that third drug to this cocktail. You know, Revlimid is the most widely used in second-line therapy. Uh, it won approval for first-line therapy early this year. It's getting more widely used there. Theoretically, there could be label expansion opportunities that would move this combination into the first-line therapy. There could be use of it off-label in the first line. We don't know how that's going to shake out. But as you mentioned, it's a huge marketplace. I mean, you've got Revlimid at $5.6 billion in sales. You've got Velcade, which is also another widely used drug in the first and second line uh, of treating this disease. That's a $3 billion a year drug. You've got Pomelis, which is a third line drug also made by Celgene. That's uh, selling at a billion dollar place a year. Um, it's really hard for me to look at this, um, the numbers for progression-free survival and tumor shrinkage and not think that doctors are going to want to use this as standard of care. And then, of course, it just comes down to what we talked about before, which is will payers pay for it? Indeed. Yeah, I mean, this is not a cheap drug. It's going to be $10,000 a month versus as compared to Revlimid's 14000 and Velcade's 9000 And it's a, a me too. You know, you're, you're using it alongside the current therapy. So it's just making things even more expensive. Um, talking about numbers, if you're curious about what the impact could be on the companies that developed this drug, Bristol in the United States will get 70% of the profit from Implicity. Abby will get the other 30%. XUS is looks like Bristol is going to pay Abby a royalty. So this is definitely more of a needle mover for Bristol than for Abby.